Today we're gonna to learn how to solder. I'm gonna show you different tools, I'm gonna to show you different tricks, and hopefully that's gonna make you better at your own soldering. First, let's talk about the equipment. This is a standard mill style uh, soldering gun. It has a variable heat control. It's useful when you're soldering into different thicknesses and different styles of metals. Uh, it goes for about $24. I'll put a link in the description. This is a standard sort of scratch uh, pad. It's used to remove excess solder from the gun. This is a standard uh, soldering stand. It holds the gun, keeps it off the table, keeps you from burning things. These are our Miller pliers. These are used to strip wires uh, very easily. The reason I like these pliers better than the multi-hole strippers is because it's a one size fits all and once you get used to the pressure, they're very efficient and they do a great job. These are flush cutters. They're used to cut wires off clean. Both of these run for about 15 to $20. Very handy to have in your kit. The other two things we're gonna talk about is solder and shrink tube. This is a 6040 resin core solder. It's fairly small, it's good for electronics, circuit boards, wires, um, anything that's uh, of a small gauge. I often see people using um, the, the very heavy solder. Um, that's typically used for when you have heavy pieces of metal, pipe, um, stuff like that. But when you're doing electronics work or fixing cables, um, the smaller the solder uh, is better. It's cleaner and it's gonna do the same job. Shrink tube is used in the place of electrical tape, especially if you're gonna have uh, a lot of wires that you're soldering. Having to put tape on all of them makes the job a little clunky. I'll show you quickly how this is to be used. Be comfortable. You're gonna be holding something that's hot. You're gonna be holding things that are small and you're gonna to have to be holding them together. If you're not comfortable, you're gonna to tend to shake. You're gonna to tend to move around. You're gonna end up burning yourself or burning the surface or you're going to just do a bad job at the soldering. In the idea of comfort, make sure you're hydrated. This is gonna make you a better solderer. The first style of soldering I'm going to show you is soldering two wires to each other. The first step is to strip the wires. Again, we're going to be using our Miller pliers. You basically apply just enough pressure and pull. We're going to do that again. Just enough pressure and pull. The first rule of soldering is you don't talk about soldering. No, I'm just kidding. The first rule of soldering is you have to tin the wires. Tin the wires means we're going to apply solder to the wires first and then we're going to melt the wires to each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply heat to the wire, not the solder. What you want to do is you want to heat the wire up so the wire itself melts the solder. I apply a little bit of solder to the uh, gun and as you can see, the wire itself melts the solder, not the gun. So again, I'm going to apply heat to the wire. Once I think the wire is hot enough, I'm going to apply just a little bit to start and as you can see, the wire is absorbing the solder. And that's how we clean the tip for the next solder. This will ensure that the tip keeps an even and consistent temperature throughout your whole job. Okay, so now what I've done is I've adjusted the wire so again that I'm comfortable. Not only is my posture comfortable, but I'm always adjusting the work so the work is comfortable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare my piece of shrink tube here. And this stuff is relatively cheap. Um, I'm going to make sure that I have enough of the shrink tube going past the bare wire so that it's getting a good grip on either side. Before I make my solder, I'm going to apply my trimmed piece of shrink tube to the wire. Now with the wires adjusted to be comfortable, they're already timmed, I already have my shrink tube on. I'm just going to melt this together, applying heat to each of the wires. They're going to adhere. And that's good. I take a look to see that I have good adhesion. This little bit of extra piece here, we'll cut that off with our flush cutters. Then what I'm going to do is slide my shrink tube into place. I'm going to make sure that it's relatively centered across the two pieces. Just a little bit of heat, not too close to the flame. You don't want to melt it. You just want it to sort of shrink together. It's not just a clever name. I'll rotate it so I get the, bot the top side. And there you have it. So now we're going to take a look at a patch cable uh, or a guitar cable. The first thing I'm going to do is just inspect each of the ends and just see if I can see anything obvious. This one looks good. So I'm taking a look at this one. I'm seeing a bunch of play on this side. Notice how the uh, jacket has come out of the collar here. So we're just going to go ahead and cut this off right away because I'm automatically I'm going to replace this. The next thing I'm going to do is inspect the cable for any sort of uh, blemishes or damage on the cable itself. 
I'm running my fingers along and I'm trying to feel for any bumps or cuts or nicks. So this cable feels all right. So the first thing I'm going to do is prep this connector uh, for the new uh, soldering. We're just going to widen these out, clean off any excess solder from the last job, and then I'm also just going to make sure the gun is not too hot. So long as you can get your fingers in here pretty cleanly, you don't have to come in with pliers. And that's it. The least amount of heat you apply, the better. You don't want to get everything hot. So the best is to have the gun set correctly, get in and get out. Because this wire doesn't have any coating, it's going to be hot, so I'm going to be very quick with it. Now that the old wires are removed and the solder is still good and clean, we're ready to attach the new wire. So the first thing we have to do is prepare the new wire. By holding the wire to the jack, I can see how much of the outer coating I have to strip away. I want to make sure that I have enough left that these, this collar here can still grab the coating and that I have enough wire to work with for my solder points. Again, here are the millers at work. I just have to make a couple of small cuts into this wire. With a little bit of the cuts put in, all I have to do is grab the wire approximately where I made the cuts and pull. Now I'm going to pull away the shield. It's important that you don't miss any of these little wires. That's what's going to create problems down the road. So take your time and make sure that you get all of these little wires out of the way. Once you've got all the wires out of the way, you give the wire a little bit of a twist, and I always like to cut off just a little bit of the end so that there's no stray or sort of dirty wires. So then I go back to the jack just to make sure that the cut I made is good. We see that we have enough of the outer uh, coating to be pinched by the collar. The ground wire is going to make a good connection. So because I saw that the positive wire, the inner wire, is touching tight against the edge of the jack, I'm just going to kick it back a little bit. That way I know it's going to be safe. We're going to take our millers again. We don't need very much here. We just need enough to make a good solder point. And now it's ready to be timmed. But with the wire comfortably in place to work, I'm going to give this lead wire a little bit of a twist. By twisting the wires just a little bit, it stops the wires from spreading apart and causing one of the strands to cause you a problem. With my soldering gun clean and of proper temperature, again, I'm going to just heat up the wire a little bit and then I'm going to apply the solder and I'm going to let the wire absorb the solder. We'll do that again with the ground wire. I'm going to heat up the wire. Now notice I have a little bit of, there's some um, excess solder on the tip. Now I'm going to go again to my cleaner. Look how much cleaner that is now. This is going to ensure that the solder melts better. By being faster, you're going to be cleaner. So again, I'm going to apply heat to the wire and then just a little bit and I'm putting the solder on the wire not on the tip of the gun. I'm actually pushing the solder into this wire while I apply heat on the underside. And that's causing the wire to melt the solder, not the soldering gun. Because we have solder on both the wire and the jack tab, I'm just gonna apply heat till it melts and wait. You can see it change color and that's how I know it's good. We're gonna do the same on the bottom side. see it change color that's how we know we're good I'm going to go in and just inspect to see that the solder is good everything looks very tight everything looks clean I don't see any of the ground wires getting anywhere near the positive or the tip of the um, jack I know that I have a decent amount of coating under the collar so with my pliers these are designed to ensure that the positive or the tip of the jack doesn't short out against the ground of the jacket. So that goes on and there you have it. So now we're going to take a look at an XLR. This is a balanced microphone cable. You see them everywhere. You can unscrew the back. Some of these jacks have little uh, screws that you have to take off. Um, just take a look at it, you'll figure it out. I'm gonna take a look inside. Now this cable uh, looks pretty good, but I'm not gonna trust it because it's in for repair. So we're just gonna go ahead and I take a cut. 
So the first thing we're going to do is prepare the jack. This vise, by the way, is available on eBay or Amazon. It's very cheap. I think I paid $15 for this, and it makes all of these jobs so much simpler. With a nice clean uh, soldering gun, I'm going to start to remove the wires, starting with the ground wire. Use extra caution here when you're pulling these wires out. It's very easy for the wire to flick out of the connector and splash solder at your face. Notice how the wire didn't want to come out. That's because I was touching my soldering gun to this contact as well as that one. So this was drawing heat from the gun. It's very temperamental. Also, it's always a good idea to give it a bit of a clean. Watch how fast this works now. Because I can see that each of these are still soldered well and everything is looking clean, this is ready to receive wires. Before you move on, you want to make sure you remember where the wires went. On these XLR jacks, it's always one, two, three. So in this case, it's going to be ground, white, black. With the back of the jack already on the cable, move it out of the way, and now it's time to trim this up to size. On these XLRs, uh, the way the cable is held inside the jack is by this little sleeve. You can see at the bottom here that it has these little pinch points. When the back of the jack goes on, it causes this to go in and it squishes the cable. And that's how it holds it in place. So when we're making our cut to strip the wires, we want to make sure that we leave enough of the outer coating that it gets pinched well by this little sleeve. Just with my finger, I've just marked where the back of that little sleeve is going to be. And now I'll take a look. And I can see that anywhere around here is going to be okay. We don't need very much wire. So again, I'm just going to give it a bit of a strip, grab the outside shield, and pull. I'm going to strip away all of the braiding. Make sure that it's any, there's no loose pieces. See how that one was sticking out? You gotta be careful, make sure you get everything. I'm going to twist it. And then I'm gonna cut it with our flush cutters. That's ready to receive solder. Then I'm gonna go through, inside this particular cable it has, see this here, this is basically just like rope. And that's to give strength to the cable from being tugged. We don't need that here, so I'm just going to go in again with our flush cutters and remove that. Good. Now we have our hot and neutral. A little bit of pressure and pull, that's what you want to see. Again, a little bit of pressure and pull. Good. Time to take a drink of water. Now with the cable comfortably in place and with my soldering gun clean and in the right temperature, I'm going to apply some heat to the wire. Start it off. And Be sure that you don't inhale any of these fumes. It's a good practice to just exhale while you're soldering and that will push the smoke away. Time to connect the cable. If you don't remember how things went, it's nice if you have the old piece, you can take a look. So ground, hot, neutral. I like to do the ground wire first because it's the stiffest and I find that um, it's easier to get it in place before you have limited movement of the cable. With our gun uh, hot and clean and everything comfortable, I'm gonna heat this up first. See it melt. Then I'm gonna apply the wire, heating up the wire. See how it kind of slid in? That's how you know you're making a good connection. You want the wire to slide in a little bit. These are actually hollow a certain way in. So you don't want to just put the wire just in this area. You want to make sure that it goes down a little bit. That's how you know you're getting a good seat. With the soldering gun put away, before I go to connect this hot wire, I want to make sure that the wire is already bent in the right way so that it wants to go into its home already. Um, you don't want to be fighting with the wire and the heat and the solder all at once. And often when you get into little tight places like this, the wire kind of wants to go where it wants to go. So I'm, I've already made sure that it's kind of bent in the right way. So that all I have to do is apply pressure and it's going to want to go where I want it to go. Sure. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply heat to the jack. And then the wire. A 
I'm going to make sure that the ground wire wants to fall in place naturally so I don't have to fight with it. First I'm going to apply heat to the contact, then to the wire, and push it in so it sinks into the connector. So once that's done, I'm going to take a good look and check all three contacts and look at the ground wires and make sure that I don't see any pieces uh, sticking out or causing a problem. One of the main issues um, with these type of connectors is stray wires from either of these contacts end up getting out and touching one of the other contacts. So this looks nice and clean, so now what I'm going to do is slide this sleeve into place, lining up these tabs. I'll take the connector, slide that on, pull that up, and we are done.